The electron is a fundamental particle. The fact that an electron is a fundamental particle means that an electron is not a collection of smaller particles. In other words, an electron is just what you measure. An electron has measurable properties such as its mass, electric charge, and magnetic dipole moment. On the other hand, electrons are negatively charged, which means they are attracted by a positive charge. So we can liken the nucleus of an atom to a vowel into which electrons can fall. The atomic nucleus is a potential vowel, meaning that an electron near it can fall into it if it doesn't have enough kinetic energy. We can liken this system to a planetary system, therefore one would expect electrons to orbit the nucleus in the same way that planets orbit stars. But there is a problem. An orbit is a state of constant acceleration and an accelerating electron will radiate energy according to the theory of electromagnetism, and the electron emitting energy will spiral towards the nucleus. One of the reasons why the theory of quantum mechanics was developed was to explain the background of the spiraling electron emitting energy. Therefore, to go beyond this situation is to enter the field of quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, the matter is described by a wave function, which is one of the fundamental properties of matter. This means that all matter behaves like a wave and can interfere with itself. This interference excludes most of the electron orbits and is characterized by a series of orbits of increasing energy. But there are only certain discrete energy values in the orbit. Therefore, an electron bound to a nucleus can only exist in certain allowed energy states. These energy states are related to other properties, such as angular momentum. An electron can make discrete quantum jumps between energy levels by absorbing or emitting energy in the form of photons of light. Since the energy levels are discrete, the photon energies absorbed or emitted will also be discrete. So one might ask why the electrons don't radiate all their energy and collapse to the bottom of the well, to the nucleus. This is because there is a minimum allowed energy state. There are no more energy states below this minimum energy state. This minimum energy state is centered in the nucleus, but it extends beyond the nucleus. It is not an orbit, it is the lowest possible energy state, and it has no angular momentum. Therefore, it cannot be seen as an orbit in any sense. Rather, we can say that the electron has a cloud of probabilities centered on the nucleus. But because the mass of the electron is very light, it spreads out beyond the nucleus. The reason why the electron is in such a diffuse state is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. On the other hand, the electron has another property related to its magnetic moment, called spin. In quantum mechanics, there is a rule called the Pauli exclusion principle. According to this rule, any particle whose spin is not an integer cannot exist in the same state. So electrons with spin one half cannot share the same quantum state. This principle is very important because it explains the shell structure of the atom, which is the basis for understanding the chemistry of the elements in the periodic table. The Pauli exclusion principle is the reason why atoms are stable and behave as they do. Therefore, the atomic structure can be seen as a kind of container for electrons. The potential valve of the nucleus traps free electrons. This implies that the free electrons already have excess energy. For electrons to bind to the nucleus, they need to lose some of this excess energy. The electrons lose the excess energy by emitting it. But this ends at some point, because according to the Pauli exclusion principle, the electrons fill the available states. The electrons are thus tightly packed around the nucleus. Free electrons need to lose their excess energy to form a stable atom. When all the lower atomic states are filled with electrons, the electrons can no longer lose any more energy, and so the atom becomes stable. All this succeeds in explaining the world we live in, but things get more complicated when we add the force of gravity. Under extreme gravity, the stable atom can become so compressed 
that electrons can interact with the nucleus. So protons capture electrons and form neutrons. These objects are huge masses called neutron stars. With more matter added, these huge masses could turn into solid masses of quarks. What holds these objects together to resist the force of gravity is the Pauli exclusion principle, also called Fermi pressure. When this pressure is finally exceeded, the object collapses into a black hole. We can't say much more about what happens to these objects inside the black hole. 